So, a mysterious discovery was made deep in the Red Sea, the so-called death pools. Woo, that's scary. In 2020, researchers embarked on a dive into the Red Sea. The mission spot was in the Gulf of Aqaba, between Saudi Arabia and Egypt. Near the end of their expedition, as they ventured deeper into the darkening waters, they noticed some strange seaweed floating above the seafloor. They decided to use a remotely operated vehicle and investigate it. Suddenly, they discovered these strange, motionless lakes of water within the sea. These are called brine pools. They're basically pockets of salty water deep on the ocean floor. And when I say salty, I mean it. Sometimes they're up to eight times saltier than the ocean water itself. Mysteriously, they don't mix well with the surroundings. They formed millions of years ago, sometime during the Miocene epoch, back when weird creatures roamed the Earth, like me, and deeply buried mineral deposits dissolved into the water. The largest pool spans about 170,000 square feet. Meanwhile, three smaller ones are under 107 square feet each. At first, this discovery didn't seem that scary. But here's why they're so horrifying. Not only are they disgustingly salty, they also lack oxygen. Now hold on a sec, isn't that normal for something that's underwater? Well, it turns out, the Earth's waters are full of oxygen, and at least half of this element on our planet comes from the oceans. Just like plants on land, marine plants such as phytoplankton, seaweed, and algae munch on sunlight and produce oxygen through photosynthesis. They release lots of it into the surroundings. Marine life then eats half of it, so only about a quarter of the oxygen that we breathe actually comes from the oceans. Just like us, sea creatures need this element to survive. Without it, they can't breathe and support their metabolism to live. That's why these pools are super dangerous for most of them. It's like a puddle of thick syrup for bugs. When they get in, the poor things immediately suffocate and pass away. Which is why the pools are surrounded by a graveyard of marine animals. But let's see how these things can exist in the first place. Have you ever tried making ice cubes from salty water? Spoiler, it's pretty hard. When you add salt, the water gets harder than usual to freeze. A phenomenon that has a funny name, freezing point depression. Oh, That's because salt interferes with the hydrogen bonds between water molecules. As it finally freezes, stuff like particles, dirt, or dissolved salts get pushed out to the sides. As a result, the salt's kind of squeezed out of the ice crystals and gets trapped near the edges in small bubbles or pockets. Something similar happens in the ocean when seawater starts freezing under super cold polar caps. The salt doesn't freeze with the water. Instead, it gets pushed out, forming a super salty cold liquid, the brine. And then it sinks down to the ocean floor. On a large scale, all this process also helps currents to form. Despite being so dangerous, the pools are still full of microbial life, because microbes couldn't care less, they'll survive anywhere. There are literally thick mats of them in the brines. There are also some salt-loving creatures, like shrimps and eels, hovering around the pool's edges. They're being super creepy, waiting to catch unsuspecting prey that ventures too close to the toxic death pool. Ew. Well, it sounds icky, I know. But this discovery gives us some fascinating insights into how life might have originated on Earth. We already know from the evolution theory that we came from the ocean. But now scientists think that life might have begun in the deep sea in some super dark, oxygen-free places. These brine pools are like time capsules. They're one of the closest things we found to the early Earth. They can tell us the planet's history of earthquakes, floods, tsunamis, and more. For example, they have some traces of rainfall that happened over a thousand years ago. And they can also help us search for life on other water-rich planets. For example, Mars most likely used to have huge oceans on it. Now, NASA scientists want to send a special instrument called HABIT for a special Red Planet mission to study things similar to our brine pools. This will tell us more about how life appears and survives in the universe. There is lots of unexplored fascinating stuff like this in the Red Sea. That's why scientists conducted the so-called Decade Expedition and spent around five months exploring the place. This expedition was launched by the National Center for Wildlife. They made so many remarkable discoveries that now we've got 77 new research papers. For example, they found over 10 blue holes, incredible underwater sinkholes that host unique ecosystems. 
They also learn that dolphins can use those blue holes to protect their young from predators. Scientists also found traces of great white sharks, a creepy community of deep-sea lanternfish living in low oxygen conditions, and even a new coral species. It's the most resilient deep-sea corals that also vibe just fine without oxygen, like microbes we mentioned. Speaking of which, research also showed us some new ancient thermal vents and large blobs of microbial formations near Farisand Island. Now, can you believe that with all that, we only explored 5% of the ocean? It's divided into several layers based on depth. Each layer becomes darker and more isolated from sunlight as we go deeper. The places that no sunlight can reach are terrifying. Now, the fun, cute layer with dolphins and turtles is called the epipelagic or sunlight zone. It's so tiny, but even this layer is about 650 feet deep. Then we have the mesopelagic or twilight zone. It's the layer of mysterious octopus, shark, and other loners, which extend to about 3,000 feet down. And then the horrors begin after this one. We encounter the bathypelagic or midnight zone. It extends to 13,000 feet below the surface, about a half of Everest above you. Here we have the famous poor blobfish, squids, and anglerfish. Below it is the abyssal zone. It extends to about 20,000 feet deep. Since there's not much sunlight or oxygen, as we mentioned, most creatures here are quite small, like tube worms and shrimp. The darkness continues until we arrive at the scariest place of the planet the place full of trenches formed by tectonic plate movements, the Hadal Zone. It's named after Hades, the deity of the underworld in Greek mythology. Just like Hades' realm is dark, remote, and guarded, the Hadal Zone is the deepest and most depressing part of the ocean. It starts at depths of around 20,000 feet and can go down to 36,000 feet and more. The famous Mariana Trench also belongs to this zone. Only three people in history have ever explored these depths in person, making it one of the least explored and most mysterious places on our planet. However, despite crazy high pressure, near freezing temperatures, and complete darkness, there are still things who manage to survive here. Guys like amphipods, which are critters who feed on dead material sinking from above, and the hadal snailfish, which lives as deep as 27,000 feet. So scientists used to assume that if there's no sunlight, there wouldn't be that much oxygen around. But one day, a research team decided to measure the levels of oxygen in one of those deep zones. Surprisingly, the levels were super high. They checked the equipment, thinking that it was malfunctioning. But nope, all the sensors showed the same thing. Turns out the oxygen was somehow generated by rocks. These small potato-sized rocks on the seafloor are called polymetallic nodules. They're rich in metals like copper, nickel, and cobalt, and they're basically like small batteries. When you put a battery in salt water, it can produce bubbles of gas, a process called electrolysis. In the same way, these rocks create tiny electric currents, which are powerful enough to produce the same gases, splitting water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. It's the first time we saw oxygen being produced by some non-living minerals. This is what scientists now call dark oxygen. It turned out that about half of large marine species, or megafauna, were living just on dark oxygen alone. All these discoveries are reshaping our understanding of where and how life could evolve. It means that we might be able to find life on other planets or satellites with low oxygen conditions, like Enceladus and Europa, the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, and they have large bodies of frozen water on them. Wow! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.